Hawaii volcano's latest, Kilauea is deforming and filling with magma, Mauna Loa and Kilauea are very high threat potential. And we'll look at the Volcano Observatory seeing the latest news on this. Kilauea, as we know, is filling in with water in the crater. And this is still continuing. This is a flyover, USGS, May 29. And this is overhead view of the crater lake, as we can see. There we go. Overhead view, 360. This is the latest. And it's still filling. The lake is growing. It's also changing color. Now, Mauna Loa is yellow advisory. That was changed. Uh, that's the latest of, uh, well, June 18. Kilauea is green normal. The updates, Mauna Loa, Kilauea, June 8th. HVO has updated the geology and history uh, of the uh, Kilauea and Mauna Loa volcanoes. And we're going to take a look at the maps. The historic eruptions have been quite frequent. Let's take a look at that after we see just, let's just finish looking at this. As you can see, have a good eye of it, what the lake looks like at the bottom of this. Here we are at uh, Volcano Observatory for Hawaii. And uh, here we are, the map of Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa yellow, Kilauea on the southeast flank. And this is uh, the very high threat potential for both of those on the big island. Let's go to Mauna Loa, which is the biggest volcano on Earth. A shield volcano because it looks like a shield. And it goes, the, uh, the eruption logging goes all the way to 1832 and you can see the frequency of eruptions how frequent it was 43 94 49 51 52 1855 59 just about every few years and up to 1903 1907 1914 16 19 26 33 40 42 49 50 75 that's a 25 year period 1984, and um, since then we haven't had any eruption. This is the historic map of the eruptions from Mauna Loa, 1843 to 2018. This is, of course, Kilauea here. But that's another thing we're going to look at. As you can see, um, there's a number of volcanoes call, uh, uh, culminating, creating the island. I think there's five, and. Uh, Mauna Loa is the biggest volcano on Earth, as, on Earth, as we, we can, see, can see. And now going back to Kilauea, the activity there, okay, is all the way back much farther down from 1750, 1790, between 1790 and 1823. We could see this going on, going on, onwards, onwards. 1832, 40, 40, 40 to, to 68, 1868, 77, 86, 91, 1894, to 1906, 1916, 62, 63, 65, 67, 68, look at that, just about every year, 71, 72 to 74, 73, 74, 75, 79, 82, and then there was a, a lapse between uh, 82 to 2018, and, uh, and this is the map of it, the map of it right there, okay, this is the, um, East River, the East Zone. Now let's go to our maps. This is what we uh, saw before. This is our crater lake, the helicopter over, uh, overview 
of Kilauea caldera, May 29, the 3D model, the water lake visible as the tan, this here, the tan area here, the deepest portion of Halimamau crater. The water lake is about 885 feet long and about 1,907 feet below the western caldera rim. And uh, they do these flyovers just about a week, every week or so. Now the current alert, let's go for Kilauea current alert. June 4th, the latest. Kilauea volcano is not erupting. Monitoring data for the month of May shows variable typical rates of seismicity and ground deformation, low rates of sulfur dioxide emission, and only minor geologic changes since the end of the September 2018 activity. Rates of seismicity over the month were about 25% lower than during the past month. Sulfur dioxide emission rates are low at the summit and are below detection limits of Puo'o at the lower east roof zone. The crater lake at the bottom of Halimamau continues to slowly expand and deepen. As of June 3rd, the lake, deep, the lake depth was about 118 feet. During this past month, summit time tilt meters showed the slight increase in inflation tilt. As we said, the tilt meters show increase, a slight increase in inflationary tilt, consistent with an increase in the rate of the magma entering the volcano's shallow storage system. Also, tilt meters recorded two deflation inflation events during the same period, half as many as April 2020. Okay? Gas, measure, gas measurements show continuing uh, low levels of sulfur dioxide from Halimamau area, which likely means magma is not present within a few hundred meters of the surface. Some amount of sulfur dioxide is being dissolved into the summit lake and work continues to try to qualify this process. The lake was last sampled by UAS January and additional sampling is planned. Now, farther east, the east roof zone, GPS stations, tilt meter continue to show consistent motions with refilling at the east roof zone, magmatic reservoir at the Puo between highway and 130, increased deformation rates beginning in March 200, uh, 2020, consistent with an episode of rift inflation west of Highway 130, less than during the month and rates and nearly are nearly back at the same levels as before March. GPS stations on Kilauea south flank continue to show elevated rates of motion that could indicate increased creep on the Décolme fault underlying the south flank, likely response to the May 4th 6.9 earthquake near Kalapana. HVO continues to carefully monitor all data streams along Kilauea East Rift Zone south flank for important changes. Although not currently erupting, areas of persistently elevated ground temperatures and minor releases of gases are still found in the vicinity of the 2018 Lower East Rift Zone fissures. These include steam and water, very small amounts of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. These conditions are expected to be long-term. Similar conditions following the 1955 eruption continue for years and decades. Now, the um, background, we're not going to go, we don't have to go, it's normal green, okay. So now, um, the monitoring, the deformation, this is the, okay, here we have the earthquakes. the earthquakes, and most of them here are much deeper, as we know. The depth here, the depth is here much, uh, you know, uh, deeper than we have in, uh, in Kilauea. This is very shallow, as you can see, these here are much deeper. Usually they're, they go around the area of the, the um, mantle plume. Now, let's go to the for deformation, is very interesting to see here at Kilauea past two days, you can see how it deformed the past two days, which is pretty high, high uh, levels. The uh, tilt Kilauea, again, it's coming up. And this is the past year. This is the past month, as you can see. And this is the past year. Big change. And this is past five years. This is the, two th the July, two th May, July, 2000. Uh, 18 eruption, as you can see, and the refilling of it right here. And the Puo global positioning system, as you can see here, again, the inflation in meters. And the past five years, again, the inflation. 
And this is the eruption of 2018, how it emptied up, and it's again inflating. The change in distance between two global positioning systems, stations located on opposite sides of Kilauea caldera, a rapid increase in distance can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir or Puo'o magma storage chamber above Puo'o GPS, change in distance between the two stations near Puo'o, a rapid increase can be interpreted as inflation of the summit magma reservoir or Puo'o magma storage chamber. And here we are for Mauna Loa, the largest volcano on Earth. It dominates the island of Hawaii, covering over half the island, surface area of 1,900 square miles, submarine area that is even more massive. It's the shield building stage of Hawaii volcanism, a period when the volcanoes grow most rapidly, adding as much as 95% of their ultimate volume. Scientists calculate Mauna Loa's volume to be at least 18,000 cubic miles. The volcano's earliest lava flow erupted, erupted into the seafloor and submarine flanks of adjacent Hualalai or Mauna Kea volcanoes between uh, 0.6 to 1 million years ago, lightly emerged above sea level about only 30, 300,000 years ago, has grown rapidly upward since then. And when describing the location of the eruptions of lava flows on Mauna Loa, scientists refer to five broad areas on the volcano. The summit area part of the volcano above uh, 12,000 feet of Asia, including Mokawewio caldera and the uppermost parts of the two rift zones. Below that elevation area are the northeast, southwest rift zones, southeast and north and west flanks. Geologists mapped at least 33 radial vents on the north and west sectors of the volcano, which signifies lava can erupt from these sectors of the volcano in addition to the rift zones of the summit area. This is a map of low at Mauna Loa's activity over the past 200 years, as we saw before, basically around, along this side. And this is, of course, the area of Kilauea, as we saw before. Lava flows spread alternately from summit area and rift zones. Let's go to our, uh, uh, you want to go to current alerts? Uh, this was June 18. Mauna Loa is not erupting rates of deformation, even though it's yellow alert. Code, aviation code, color code is yellow. Rates of deformation and seismicity have not changed significantly in the past week. And during the past week, HVO seismometers recorded 75 small earthquakes. Most of these occurred at shallow depths of less than five miles below sea level. The largest earthquake was 2.5 magnitude an event that occurred at the uppermost southeast flank. Global positioning system measures show long-term slowly increasing, consistent with magma supply to the volcano's shallow storage system, gas concentration and fumarole temperatures at both summit and sulfur cone on the southwest rift zone remain stable. Okay, so now let's go to our earthquakes. And then we'll go to the deformation data. Our earthquakes, there we go, and um, okay, this was uh, magnitude three on the fi on uh, 24th of May, magnitude 2.3, and this one was sorry 3.2 magnitude on June second. Let's go to our deformation. So we can see what's happening there. The past week, the past month, the tilt data from the site near the west, uh, northwest of Mauna Loa summit, the tilt meter responds to daily seasonal temperatures as we saw before. The magma storage system, and let's go to our past year, and we can see the inflation here, the past year, and the past five years. Tremendous amount of inflation in meters the past five years. Showing, of course, that there is a uh, feeling of the magma the reservoir. Changes in distance between the two GPS stations. Mauna Loa summit caldera. Extensions across the caldera is often an indication, as we said, of inflation of the shallow summit magma reservoir. And here we go again, past year and the past five years. 
I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you for your support. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.